Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. You're here, are you not? You're breathing, are you not? He's met all of your needs, has he not? Hallelujah. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Isn't God good? All the time. God is good. Amen, amen. And he, he needs to hear that from us. For us. Not for him, for us. Amen? We need to have an attitude of gratitude, as Brother Jason said earlier. Hallelujah. It does you good to realize how good your God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you're in a dark place, you can remember how good your God is. When you're in a difficult place, you can remember how good your God is. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And I want to welcome those of you who are online. I'm sorry we started late, but I'm not completely sorry. Amen. Because Pastor Trina was putting it down again. And uh, you know where to find her. <laughs> right here. The address is on the website. Hallelujah. Amen. You know where to find her. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are also still praying for all of those who are on our prayer list. But especially our, our hearts are heavy this morning because some people that are very special to us. Uh, Grady Stevens and Johnny Stevens lost a very special person in their lives this week. And so our hearts are heavy, but we also know that God is a healing God. He can heal their hearts. He can remind them of all the good times. They'll start out crying and they'll end up laughing, telling jokes and remembering unique times that only they know about. They'll start to understand the, or, or, or be reminded of the blessing that their loved one, uh, Brother Grady's uh, uh, brother, was to them. Amen? He will take them from a dark, heavy place to a place of gratitude for having him here as long as they did. But they're human, and so we want to be with them during the hard times, during the dark times, during the painful times. So Brother Grady and Sister Johnny and any other family members, we are with you at this time. Amen. We can't be there in Alabama with you, but we're with you in spirit. We're with you in our hearts. We're with you with the love. And if we could, we'd wrap our arms around you. So we go to God and ask him to wrap his arms around you. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I'll also just quickly uh, remind us that our men's fellowship is coming up this Saturday and we're getting ready. Amen. We're getting ready, getting ready, get, 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 getting ready. Amen. I have uh, been talking to each one of the brothers to get us ready for our time together. Our theme, I will share that with you. Our theme is the power of prayer. The power of prayer for a God man. You, I don't know if you heard what I just said. Go, go back, go, go on the website, I think it's there, and find the very first sermon that I preach when this, these services opened up publicly. It's called Man Card. Man Card. The second one was called Independent Woman. Go check those out. You'll see where I'm coming from. Amen? A God man has a special place. The God man has a special voice. A God man has a special connection. And it's his only superpower. It's his only superpower. But when he forgets that, he's in trouble. Hallelujah. That's all I'll say. Amen. Brothers, are you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. You know, I was thinking about the song, uh, Surrender, I Surrender. 
boy, I had to surrender this week. First of all, let me just tell you, don't miss next week. Please don't miss next week. We're going to go over. Anybody, anybody know about the, 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 the Ten Commandments? I only have to see a couple of hands. The rest of you guys don't know Ten Commandments? All right, all right. All I'll tell you is, is that, you know, we, talk, we teach and we preach against newspaper clipping Christianity where you just take a, a, some verses and clip it out like the news, head, head, the heading in the news, right, the headline news. Well, sometimes when it comes to the Ten Commandments, we're newspaper clipping Christians. So next week, we're going to talk about the Ten Commandments in context. Ten Commandments in context. Don't miss it now. I was distracted. I was so focused on next week, God had to sit me down and say, boy, <laughs> you better tell those folks what I want them to know. I said, but Lord, I can preach that thing with no notes. Boy, <laughs> you better sit yourself down and you better tell. You don't know. You Pay attention. You see the message I help you create? Look at it for yourself. You don't know what I know. I know who needs this message this week. The, and that person or those persons, they don't need to know about the Ten Commandments in perspective today. They need what I gave you today. So that's, I'm glad you're excited. I'm glad you're fired up. I'm glad you're enthusiastic. But boy, <laughs> sit on down <laughs> and tell the people what I wanted you to tell them today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, last week, our message was tremendously encouraging. And let me just before I welcome Sister Belinda. <laughs> I forgot we have, a, we have a visitor here, and we are so grateful that you chose to join us. Amen. And I don't know who this message is for today. It's for everybody, but it's especially for somebody. And I don't know if you're that somebody, but if it is, I won't be glad I obeyed. I'm going to be glad that I obey God. Amen. But we were, were you encouraged last week? Amen. That God, did you learn that God is with you and for you? Amen. He is with you and for you, especially in those times when you can't feel it. He is with you and for you when you can't see it. So when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling rejected, when you're feeling not supported, when you're feeling not understood, undervalued, nobody knows your situation, you are never, ever, ever, help me, ever, 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 you are never, help me now, never, ever, 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 somebody needs to hear this alone. Because somebody's feeling that right now. You are never alone. It may feel like you're alone. Things may look like you're alone. People may not understand you and make you feel like you're alone, but you are not alone. God is there with you and he is for you. Just feel his arms in the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, today's message is just as much from God's heart as last week's message. And but in this particular case, it's cautionary. Somebody say cautionary. God loves you. So he sometimes gives us a cautionary message. Do you tell your kids not to run out in the street? Do you tell them not to hang out at a certain place or with certain people? Cautionary, just as much love as when you say, oh, I love you, I'm with you, I support you, I'm behind you all the way, go ahead, I want you to fulfill your destiny, your purpose, I want you to maximize you. That comes from the loving heart of a parent, right? The same heart says, ooh, don't do that. Ooh, don't get with that one. That's not the one for you. But do we listen? <laughs> Cautionary. It's about today having a sense of urgency. Somebody say urgency. urgency. To do what you know you should do. Mm, 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 mm. It's about Take not taking things for granted, not taking people for granted, not taking time for granted. I'm going to say that again. Not taking time for granted, not taking opportunity for granted. I'm going to say those again. It is about having a sense of urgency to do what you know you should do. It's about not taking things for granted. 
It's about not taking people for granted. It's about not taking time for granted, nor opportunity for granted. Hmm. And lastly, we're covering a lot here, personal responsibility. We're learning today from the book of Proverbs. Solomon was made king in his father's stead, and God said, what do you want, son? Anything you want. Tell me your heart's desire. And he said, I want, he didn't say I want to have wisdom. He says, I want to, if you take it in the Hebrew, I want to be able to hear with understanding. I'm going to be hearing your people's problems. I'm going to be hearing your people's disagreements. I want to be able to hear with discernment so I can properly judge your amazing people. And so he's got a whole book filled with the evidence of what God gave him so that he was ready to rock and roll with anything you would bring to him. So I ask you as we prepare to go into this word, what have you been putting off? I just told you not to take things for granted, not to take people for granted, not to take time for granted, not to take opportunity for granted, And I'm also telling you to take personal responsibility and I'm saying to have a sense of urgency to do what you know you ought to do. Same heart, same God, same love. Are you hearing me? What have you been putting off? Assuming you'd have more time. Assuming the invitation, the opportunity will always be there. And what and who are you taking for granted? What and who are you assuming will always be there? What and who are you assuming is going to continue to be patient with you? What and who are you assuming is going to continue to ride you about what you ought to do? Same God, same heart. Cautionary today, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you feel the love? Do you feel the love in his words? Do you feel the love in where he's going? Amen. Now, I I had to stick to this. I was distracted, but he wanted you to hear this. This is what obedience looks like. Let's go to Proverbs 27 and 1. Proverbs 27 and 1. Just a little one, little old verse. One little verse. Now there's more. We're not going to end here, but we're going to start here. Let's read it all together. Read loudly so the folks on the internet can hear you. Boast, now I'm reading from the King James Version. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not of tomorrow. Don't assume you have tomorrow. He could have said a week. He could have said a month. He could have said a year because that would apply to our various circumstances. But you can't get to a week until you get to a day. And only today is promised. So you need to be the best you you can be today. You need to take full advantage of today. But if you're spending today talking about what you think you might do tomorrow, that's okay if that's going to Disneyland, but it's not okay when you are not doing what you know you are supposed to do. What you have a responsibility to do to God, to others in your life, and sometimes to yourself. Do you know we won't even do what's in our own self-interest? Come on now. As selfish as we are, we don't even realize we are hurting ourselves by not handling today what we're supposed to handle. Lord, have mercy. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. All that you have is today, my friends. All that you don't even, and you may not have all day. Come on now. All that you have is now. But that's not how we live. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't plan for the future. But if you plan as if your future is endless, 
If you plan as if you can do what you're supposed to do anytime you feel like it, if you plan as if God can wait on you forever, but he's got endless time, but your opportunity is not endless. Come on now. That opportunity is not guaranteed to be available forever. Are you hearing me? Now, before we go to the rest of our text, which you just so you know, will be found in Proverbs chapter six. We are learning from Solomon. We're learning from God through Solomon. I'm going to give you a couple quotes. Is that all right? Amen. We're going to work in some worldly stuff that matches what we're trying to say uh, in the spirit from the word. The first quote that I'm going to share with you comes from a very great man in the history of the church. His name is Martin Luther. He is the great reformer. He took us from all Catholic to have the Lutheran denomination and then all of the other uh, 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 Protestant denominations. It's sad that we use that term because it says that we're protesting <laughs> against something. But it's true. We were protesting against the fact that, that, that God can only speak to one man or only men in the pulpit, that he can't speak to a people and that the Bible can't be read by individuals and that we live by faith and not by all the works and stuff like that. He it was a proper reformation, but he has something to say. And it's just a few words, but I want you to listen. He is quoted to have said, how soon, not now, becomes never. How soon, not now, becomes never. When we say not now, we don't usually mean never. But I'm trying to tell you that the man was right when he said, how soon, not now, becomes never. Now, it could become never because you lose the opportunity. You say you're going to do it next week. You don't even see next week. You say you're going to hook up with somebody. You tell them you're going to tell them you love them. You're going to tell them you're sorry. You don't have them with the opportunity to tell them you're sorry and you love them next week. So it could be that. But it's also true that when you put things off, you think a month later, you're just as likely to do it. You think a year later, you're just as likely to do it. You think maybe two years later, you're more likely to do it. Not true. And it's not a linear regression either. How soon, not now, becomes never. It does not take long before not now becomes never. The same quote was borrowed by the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who also said, how soon, not now, becomes never. But he was having a whole different t subject he was talking about. He was talking about justice for all. He was talking about being judged by the content of your character and not the color of your skin. If you don't seize it now, those who hold the power will never fix the problem. How soon? Not now. Becomes never. So what's the solution? Deal with it now. What's the solution? Don't put it off. What's the solution? Make the sacrifice. What's the solution? Seize the day. Carpe diem. Because tomorrow is not promised. Hallelujah. And those who need to change, those who are in the advantage position, they're not going to give that up very easily. So if you get a tender moment, if you get their attention, you better seize it today because they're going to get comfortable. We saw ourselves in this country and we realized the wrong that we'd done. We realized how uneven the playing field was and we developed something called affirmative action. Can I tell you, though, the people who got affirmative action did not take advantage of it? Just a couple, just a few. Why? Because they assumed it would be there forever. Those who helped pass Roe v. Wade assumed it would be there forever. And then somewhere around the time I was in college, the Matthew Bakke case came along. Anybody know what that is? Matthew Bakke was a young man, he's a white young man who was applying to the UC Davis School of Medicine. And he didn't get in. And somebody black got in that had lower scores or not as good a grades because they factored in other things, including race. And he says, that's not fair. That's reverse discrimination. And that clock has been tick, 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 ticking ever since. 
So I don't know if you're paying attention, but we are on the precipice of having affirmative action outlawed. So if you didn't take, care, take advantage of it, it might be too late. What am I saying? You need to seize the day because tomorrow is probably going to be different than today. And you might not even see tomorrow. Hallelujah. 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 This you, proverb, you could say, or this quote is really a warning against laziness. But not just laziness, all of laziness is more benign sounding cousins. Amen. We, we had a message years ago called Confusion Cousins, Confusion's Cousins. But laziness, how many of us would admit to being lazy? All right, I've got, whoa, for those on it, we've got three or four folk in here that admit to being lazy. Now, the rest who might be lazy are, are not, maybe you admit to being an avoider. Hmm. Mm, okay, so now maybe we might get to everybody eventually. But we got some lazy ones. We got some that who are avoiders. How about our procrastinators? We got any procrastinators in the house? So God was right. I was preaching the right message. Amen. I'm glad I was obedient. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So understand uh, my, 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 my lazy folk, understand my avoiders, understand my procrastinators, understand my denial people. It's more than a Nile, it's more than a river in, in Africa. <laughs> Amen. Understand the chances of you really taking action diminish over time and they diminish quickly. So don't get settled, don't get comfortable. Don't make assumptions. Don't take people, time, opportunity for granted. Amen? Amen? Now, I have a second quote. Is that all right? Yeah. Now, this comes from, uh, you all know that, well, you maybe don't, but I read a lot, and I'm into documentaries, and I'm into finance and all that sort of stuff. And so I, I have a quote to you from the great prophet Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> A proverb from the, now, now he stole it from somebody else. There's a man, Samuel Johnson, who, who, who actually made this quote back in 1748. And there's slight, you know, uh, uh, revisions of it, amen, or versions of it. But here's how it goes. The chains of habit, hear me now, are too light to be felt. The chains of habit, they're too light. Some would say too diminutive, too small. You can't even feel them. They're like very light little string bracelet. You can barely feel it. The chains of habit, the things that you do consistently, the things that you do regularly, the chains of habit are too light to be felt until they are too heavy to be broken. The chains of habit. Habit is something that, that you do. You, you didn't even necessarily start out to make it a habit, but you do it so regularly it becomes a habit. And if it's not good for you, if it's not helpful, if it's not fruitful for you, if it does not help you realize your potential in God, your destiny in God, you can have habits that work against you. But you don't notice. You don't realize. You don't see it. Because the chains of habit are just too light to be felt until it's too late. Until they're too heavy to be undone. They're too heavy to be broken. Do you hear what the prophet is saying? What you do consistently becomes who you are. There is a sneaky danger to destructive behavior patterns, amen? How did you, how many of you know that avoidance is a destructive behavior pattern? How many of you know that procrastination is a destructive behavior pattern? How many of you know denial, it actually is okay in a, an acute crisis. So you can put it away so you can function for the moment, but it's not a good long-term strategy. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a sneaky thing. It's dangerous. It's destructive for you to go through these patterns over and over again. So laziness is destructive. Avoidance is destructive. Putting things off is destructive. Procrastination is destructive. Being in continuous denial 
is destructive and folks will even knock on your door, call you on the phone and literally blast right through that denial and you'll get off the phone still in denial. Did you know that? That's my denial and I'm not letting go of it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you do consistently becomes hardwired, my friends. Now, it works against you when it's bad habits, but it also can work for you. It may not feel like you're really getting uh, built up if you start lifting weights in the first few days. It, you may not realize it, at first when you start working out and walking or running or jogging or doing some aerobic exercise that you're going to be able to run two, three miles easily a, a few months from now. It, may, it, it creeps up on you. So that, that knife cuts two ways. But this is a cautionary tale. This is a cautionary message. So what we're advising you against is laziness and avoidance and procrastination and denial because they will eventually hurt you and you'll be the last one to see it coming. Right. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter six. Proverbs chapter six. We are here talking about doing what you should do today, not taking today for granted, not taking tomorrow for granted, not taking people for granted, not taking opportunities for granted. And also we're talking about personal responsibility. Now we're gonna be covering this chapter from verse one to verse 11. And it's really two segments, it's two separate points, but they overlap. And I'll begin reading verses one and two, my son, if thou be surety, what does that mean? Surety. Surety. That means you are the guarantor. You are the one that says, if they don't pay the debt, I'll pay the debt. If they don't show up for trial, you can take my house. <laughs> my son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken the hand, shaken hands, it's a handshake, okay, my word. If thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, what does it say after that? Read it with me. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. I know you have newspaper clipped that verse. I know you have. And you applied it to something, didn't you? Thou art snared by the words of your mouth, right? Thou art taken. You are, thou art snared. You are lured in by the words of your mouth. You are then entrapped and ensnared by the words of your mouth. This is what he's talking about. Emphasis your. And what he is saying here is if you're going to guarantee, if you're going to shake the hands, if you're going to make the confession that I will back that person, you just trapped yourself voluntarily. Voluntarily, voluntarily. Now, is this the Bible? Are we supposed to be giving people, loving people, generous people? Yes. The Bible says the man who said, I want to be able to have a hearing that allows me to be discerning so that when folks come to me with their problems, I know how to help them. Amen. So I have somebody that came to me and they said, sir, uh, here's the problem that I have. I can't sleep. I'm losing my appetite, I'm losing weight, my hair is falling out, I'm feeling nervous, I'm being jumpy. Well, what, 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 why do you think that is? Well, let's talk about it, what, what's going on in your life? Well, I don't have to look far, here's what's driving me crazy. I, was the, I became the guarantor for somebody and now I'm feeling all the pressure and now I am got, I've got all the burden and they are scot-free. So now, when they take days off work that they're not supposed to, I'm worried. When they don't handle their business, I got to be worried. How did I get here? Well, I don't know how you got there, son, but let me just tell you what my advice is. Let's go to verse 3. Let me just tell you what my advice is. Because we put ourselves in that situation, amen? All right, well, here's his advice. Verse 3 through 5. Do this what? Now. now, my son, 
and deliver thyself. Get yourself out of that situation. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble yourself, beg him if you have to, and make sure thy friend Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe, meaning like a deer running away from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. You got yourself into that situation. Here's my advice. Get yourself out. I don't care what it takes. I don't care how much you have to humble yourself. I'm telling you with urgency. Beg, bug, harass. Get yourself out of that because now you have all the burden. You have all the worry. You shedding all the tears. You losing all the sleep. And what are they doing? Are they more likely to handle their business? Why should they? They've got you. Are they more likely to do they know what they know? They, why should they? So don't do it. And with urgency, waste no time. Go to them and say, let me out of this agreement. Let me out of this agreement because I'm losing all the sleep and you're doing fine. And you don't seem to be bothered by it. Having a sense of urgency and determination, get yourself out of it. Guess what? Here's the moral to the story. If you're already in it, try to get out of it. But you know what the person you got to worry about the most? They're probably not going to let you out of it. That's how they operate. You're not the first one, nor will you be the last. Did you hear me? Get yourself out of that situation. So what do you learn from that? Don't do it in the first place. Don't do it in the first place. Have you ever co-signed for someone? Ooh, I didn't have nobody raise their hands. I, okay, all right. Is this the Bible? Now listen to me, we're talking about Proverbs here. So I'm not inviting you to the land of black and white. I'm inviting you to the land of wisdom. Because if God doesn't take your breath of life from you, oh, you'll live to see the consequences of that decision. And oh, maybe it'll work here or there. But understand, this is wisdom. Wisdom is, is always here to make your life better Right. To give you fewer headaches, give you fewer sleepless nights. But we're not going. Wisdom is wasted on who? Wise. The wise. <laughs> the wise have it. Then they say it to themselves and then they say it to other people. And it's like they said it to themselves. <laughs> That's just you know, I'm preaching. Just say, Pastor, you're preaching because I'm because you're telling the truth. Wisdom is wasted on the wise. Uh, Glenda, Glenda has been in her field for a really, really long time. She's got so many things that she knows and she could try to. How, how many of them listen? Come on now. See, I, I, <laughs> that's just the way it is. So this trying to tell you, don't make yourself the guarantor. I had somebody become my guarantor before. And you know they paid a price for that? I wasn't ready. I was in college. I've told this story before. I was in college and I was around all these rich people. And, so, and, I, and I'm on to, I don't, there's no name, so there's, I won't even say the name of the church. But, but somebody started telling me all this faith stuff. You could have anything. You could manifest it and all that sort of stuff. And I was open. And I got down and I manifested that thing that I couldn't pay for. <laughs> on somebody else's credit though I had to apologize for that I had to repent for that I had to ask for forgiveness for that I, I affected somebody else's life I affected their marriage I did that and they did that to me I, I'm one of the most trustworthy people I would have worked 10 jobs, but when the time came, they said, you're in college, you can't work 10 jobs, just let it go. We will eat this. I caused that. But the person who did that for me also caused their own anguish. 
And I am extremely trustworthy. So I'm just saying the Bible says, if you're in it, try to get out of it. Do everything you can. But if you're not in it yet, don't go there. Amen. Amen. Woo, somebody's mad at me now. Somebody's mad at me because you co-sign for your child or you put bond up for somebody's bail. And how come you I, look? Hey, I'm just saying the Bible says mm, might not be smart. That's all I'm saying. It's OK to love them. It's a, just know that's the I'll jump in front of a freight train for my children. I'll jump in front of a freight train for my wife. And that's on me. I'll be dead. Right. It's a choice I made. Amen. But it's different for me being dead and in heaven and you living down here with the consequences of being a guarantor for somebody else. The relationship is ruined. Your financial life is ruined. Your emotional life is ruined. Your mental life is ruined. Maybe even your spiritual life is affected because what you could do for God. Now it's even harder than it would have been. And you should have just seized the moment and stayed out of their business. Mm mm mm. I know there's at least one person I was supposed to preach this for. So somebody is at least inside saying, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You, you actually paying attention to me. I thought I was alone. I thought you didn't know. I thought nobody cared. I thought nobody understood. But Lord, you are talking to me today. Get yourself out of that contract. You're the only one with the burden. You're the only one with the stress. Now, this point of diligence and urgency bleeds over into the next verses. Were you ready to, ready to go there with me? Amen. So we're going to verse 6, where the proverb writer says, go to the ant, meaning take notice of the ant. Thou sluggard. What's a sluggard? A sluggard is a lazy person. All right, we got some sluggards in here. You admitted it early. It sounds worse when we say sluggard, don't it, huh? I know. It's like, I ain't no sluggard. I admit to being lazy. I ain't no sluggard. Uh, I don't know when you put it like that, Pastor. Oh, sluggard. Mm -mm -mm. Go to the ant. Pay attention to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider his ways. You want some wisdom? You want a little cautionary uh, love here? Then, then pay, pay attention to the ant. Consider I love this because they made it feminine. Consider her ways. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Consider her ways and be wise. Gosh, I don't want to get too distracted, but let me just tell you this. I love that they use the feminine here because in humanity, the person that's most likely to put away a little and put away a little to put away a little to put away a little to have more later is the woman. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It'll be somewhere. It'll be in a closet somewhere. <laughs> It'll be in a bank account you don't know about. All I'm saying is, I am just so glad that the writer said her. Oh, my God. Woo. Consider her ways. I know you are all a nun, dude, but consider her ways. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. I know you're a Hail Mary guy, kind of guy. You like to throw the bomb, but... She knows how to chip away and chip away and chip away. Hallelujah. Go to the ant, thou lazy person. Consider her ways and what? Be wise. Mm, mm, mm. You still want to put things off. You still want to avoid. You still want to live in denial. As you do that, when your hard times come, because they're guaranteed to come, They'll come when you least expect it. You won't be able to reverse them. And you'll be the only one surprised. Because everybody else could see it coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's go to verse 7. Which having no God. We're still talking about the ant. Are you willing to consider our amazing female ant? It says... She has no guide, overseer, or ruler, meaning she has no one to tell her what she ought to do or that she ought to do it. She has no one 
pushing her, telling you that she has to do it. She has no one over seeing her, demanding that she must do it. She is self-motivated. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 8. Having no guide and no overseer and ruler, she provideth her meat, meaning her food, meaning her sustenance, meaning her wherewithal in the summer. And gathereth her food in the harvest. She handles her business when the business should be handled. She handles her business when the business should. You can handle business anytime, right? But she, pay attention, watch her and learn. She handles the business while the iron's still hot. She handles her business when she's told, handle it. And she can see the value in chipping away every day. You just want to hit home runs. At least that'll be your testimony in the end. The truth is you were just lazy. You'll say, I didn't swing because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see a pitch I could hit a home run. No, you were just lazy. But she handles her business when the business should be handled with a steadfast sense of purpose. And just as important as anything, taking not one day, taking not one moment for granted. We're coming back to her. We're coming back to her. Let's go to verse 9 and 10. Because now that I've told you to observe the ant, I want you to learn from her. I want you to be wise as a result of observing her. Here's what I got to say to you. Sluggard, avoider, procrastinator, denier. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Who, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? When are you going to wake up? When are you going to realize that this is not helping you? Yet, come on now, my Bible study people, you know this. Yet, oh, just a little sleep. Just a little slumber. Just a little folding of the hands. I'm not sleeping. I'm just resting my eyes. Sound familiar? Oh, I'm not sleeping. You thought I was asleep? I know exactly what they said on that TV program. What'd they say? Uh, uh, I'm not going to bed. I'm just taking a nap. Just a short little nap. Well, you can take your little naps and you can just have just a little bit of folding of the hand, just a little bit of sleep. That's what you tell yourself. But if you have a little bit of sleep and a little bit of slumber, and that is your habit, you can give that excuse once. I overslept. I couldn't do it. I was tired. But are you always tired? Huh? Do you need 10 times more sleep than everybody else? Do you not have opportunity while everybody else, while she is chipping away and chipping away and taking care of each day for its own, take, taking, taking full advantage of each day, handling her business? What are you doing? Excuses? Just a little folding of the hands. You thought you could get away with just a little folding of the hands. Just a little sleep. Just a little slumber. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Just a little folding of the hands to sleep. Verse 11. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy want, meaning your lack, as an armed man. Meaning it's going to come. You thought just a little sleep, just a little slumber. But if you're doing that every day. You should expect that your poverty will come in the harvest time. We'll go back to her. We'll go back to her. Let's go back to the ant. Because what we now know is that the little sleep, the little slumber, the lazy person, they're going to get their comeuppance. They're going to get what it is that they're sleeping and they're slumbering and they're putting off and they're delaying and they're procrastinating and, and saying tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. 
What they're really saying is maybe somebody else will do it for me. Come on now. Your poverty is going to come like a thief in the night is what that's really saying. Like someone who's going to come and break in and your lack will be like an armed man. You won't be able to do anything about it. It will be too late if you don't save for retirement and go to Vegas instead or have the car you can't afford instead or do all the traveling that you can't afford. Guess what? You're going to be living off of only Social Security and that's not easy. It's not easy. Amen? So if you put off for tomorrow or next week or next month what you should be doing today, there is a price to pay. And it'll come on quickly. It'll come on suddenly. And there will be no way out. So wisdom is wasted on the wise, but how about if we hear some wisdom and we act on it? Ooh, what if we did that? And what if we started today? How powerful would that be? So our ant woman, do I have any ant women in the house? Do I have any, okay, uh, for y'all on the internet, okay, I have some hands raised. I thought I'd get some amens. Our ant woman she knows that she's an ant. She can't transport all of the food that she needs to get through the winter. So she takes advantage of the summer. And she doesn't wait till the end of the summer. She actually goes and she chips away at those little pieces of the leaf and she goes and gets a little bit of the blade of grass and she goes and all you'll see is her dutifully going along that path, putting away for a rainy day, putting away for another time. Now this is taking advantage fully of today and doing what you're supposed to today. So be, just because you have, don't have tomorrow promise doesn't mean that you should do like the, the left behinders were doing, stopping their jobs, saying Jesus is coming tomorrow. I'm just going to go. Why well, go to work? Tomorrow ain't promised, so why should I invest in today? Tomorrow's not promised. Let me do whatever I want to do. No, 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 no. You're supposed to be found occupying, handling your business today. Today, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And do therefore what I said, because harden not your heart can mean you don't believe God, but it also can mean you don't obey God. She doesn't take any moment or opportunity for granted. But do you know some of us think that later is always an option? Come on now. Later is always an option. Or like I said earlier, somebody else will enable me. Somebody else will do it for me. It'll work out because they're not going to let me fall. It'll work out because they will bridge the gap. So I can do a little folding of the hands because I don't believe that fat meat is greasy. Lazy people love themselves. They just understand that other people also love them. So they can fold their hands. But the Bible says you're going to pay for that. Amen? Amen. Some think that tomorrow is always a good option. And the worst thing for these people, this sluggard, is that things are okay until they're suddenly not. Suddenly not. When the poverty comes, bam, like a thief in the night. And like when the poverty comes and you can't get out of it. It's like a strong man. You can't get out of it. Are you hearing me? So now the sluggard has folded the hands and slept their way through all of the time and opportunity they had to take care of business and, and live up to their own personal responsibility in life in ministry, in whatever. So here is the question. Now that the sluggard is dealing with the poverty, now that the sluggard is paying the price, now that the sluggard is crying, now that the sluggard has it hard, whose problem is that now? Hmm. Whose problem is it? Let's go back to verse one. <laughs> My son, if thou be a surety for a friend, if you are stricken the hands with a stranger and you are snared by the words of your mouth. If you get in there 
and you let and you reinforce their bad behavior patterns, if you get in there and try to soften every blow, if you get in there and make yourself the one that takes on the burden, if you get in there and you take the headaches because you don't like the fact that they've now gotten the outcome of their actions, if you do that, you did that. Don't blame anybody else. Don't blame. It doesn't seem like these two were connected, but you see they're connected now. If they end up in that position, this is not lack of compassion. This is wisdom. And maybe fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. How many of you guys are second and third and fourth offenders? <laughs> Come on now. Do I have any admitted enablers? In, okay, I've got one, two, three, four. Amen? Hallelujah. So the question then is, are you putting anything off that you should do today? Are you taking tomorrow for granted? Are you living up to your personal responsibility? Are you enabling? Are you getting involved in things? Are you entangling yourself? Are you ensnaring yourself where you should not be? So I want you to remember the sluggard and the quote. How soon, not now, becomes never. The thing that you say, I want to do it now. I'm not comfortable doing it now. I'm not ready to do it now. But all you have is now. All you know that you have is now. So if you're willing to not do the thing, if you're willing to disappoint the one who, who, who trusted you to do the thing, if you're willing to have the thing go undone, and if that vision doesn't bother you, then that's fine. Keep on doing what you're doing. But I'm saying all that you have is now. All that you have is now. So who whispered in your ear and told you you have forever? Who showed you that in the Bible? Who preached that sermon to you? Who taught that Bible study to you? Who gave that doctrine to you? All that you have is now. Remember the ant. The sooner and the more often you do the right thing, the better off you'll be. I need to say that a couple more times. The sooner and the more often you do the right thing, the better off you'll be. Do you want to be better off? The sooner, somebody say sooner. sooner. What's the soonest you could do something? Now. Right now. And the more often, because what you do consistently, habitually, becomes who you are. It's a reflection of your character. The sooner and the more often you do what? The right thing, because you're always doing something, even if you're folding the hands and sleeping. The sooner and the more often you do the right things, the better off you'll be. So what's God saying to us? Act today. Somebody needs to hear this. Somebody, God is talking to you. I need you to act today. Do you know tomorrow is not promised? Do you know next week is not promised? Take personal responsibility. Somebody needs to hear God saying, I made you, you, be you, do you. This is your life, not their life. I didn't put people in your life for you to fold your hands. I didn't put support in your life for you to take it for granted. I didn't put people in your life with wherewithal and caring for you to be lazy and take them for granted. And basically what you're saying is, I'm okay if they end up hurting. I'm okay if they end up crying. I'm okay if they end up ensnared. I'm okay with that. What does that say about you? Take personal responsibility. In your life, develop good habits because it's not always bad. Same thing is true for good. Chip away and chip away. If you do it one day, you can do it the next day. If you do it the next day, you can do it the following day. You do it the following day, eventually it becomes a habit, and that's hard to be broken. 
Unfortunately, bad habits are even harder. But you don't see it coming because you're just doing it habitually before you realize it's a habit. And it's very hard to undo. Can I just tell you, that's one of the things that a consecration is for. Undoing bad habits. So develop good habits and avoid the bad ones starting when? Amen. Starting right now, today, because that's all that you know that you have. Do what God told you when? Now. Today. Do what God told you. You guys ain't liking me now. Do what God told you. Thou art snared by the words of your mouth. <laughs> Thou art taken with the words of your mouth. And so you just said that if God told you to do something, you're going to do it when? All right now. Woo, world going to be changed now. We're going to unleash some For God's Glory Ministries and Associates on the world because we're going to rock and roll with who God made us to be, filled with the Holy Ghost, freed up by the blood. We're going to do it now. Oh, devil, you in trouble. We all roll up on you now. Come on now. Mm, mm, mm. I'm closing. And I want to close on this note because everything I've said, God means. Tell someone that you love them today. Oh, I show it in my actions. I said, tell someone that you love them today while you can or are you taking them for granted don't take them for granted yet another day Amen. do you know what that would do for them to hear you say I love you Amen. and you holding on to that and you're going to hate yourself for it if they're gone tomorrow morning right. tell someone right. that you love them do the good that you can do and do it now. Amen. Do it today. Because it's all that you have. Amen. A little bit harder now, maybe. Apologize and make a relationship right today. Amen. Apologize and make a relationship right today. A word to the wise. When you apologize, it's because you have metanoia, right. repentance. You were wrong. You are godly sorry. Amen. It has nothing to do with their reaction. They don't, have, they don't owe you right. affirmation. They don't owe you right. a certain reaction. Right. If you are sorry, it doesn't matter what the reaction is. They might say, oh, my God, and give you everything you want. And, oh, I love you. Thank you so much for apologizing. If you apologize, it's because you're sorry. And that's it. Anything else is icing on the cake. Anything else is gravy. Apologize. And create the space and opportunity for that relationship Amen. to get right. Amen. Do yourself a favor by proving to God that you know when you've been in some mess, that you know when you've been wrong. And apologize. And create the opportunity for that relationship to get right. Amen. If you can do this, if you're willing to do this, your life will be better. Amen. Let's thank our God for loving us enough to guide us, to teach us, to correct us, and to warn us. Same God, same heart, same Bible. And to God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you for visiting us. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for teaching us. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, God, for helping us to be better. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.